Hey, what's going on guys? 2016 is rapidly coming to a close. Some might say not soon enough, but I thought I would give you guys my list of my top 10 favorite movies of 2016. Now, just a disclaimer, this isn't necessarily a list of the best movies of 2016 in terms of the best acting, best direction, best screenplay, the most likely to win Academy Awards, whatever. No, this is my list of what were my favorite movies that I saw. And th that's a really important distinction. These are movies that I have actually seen. Unfortunately, there's quite a long list of movies that I did not get to see yet this year, some of which may have had appearances on this list if I would have seen them, and some of those movies include Eddie the Eagle, Hell or High Water, Jackie, Manchester by the Sea, A Monster Calls, Moonlight, Nocturnal Animals, Patriot's Day, Silence, and Sing Street. Now with those movies, either I didn't get to see them in theaters and haven't yet gotten them from DVD, Netflix, or Redbox, or whatever, and some of those are still in very limited release, and I haven't had a chance to go check them out. So those are off the list. Like I said, maybe they would have appeared somewhere on the list if I would have seen them, but that's moot point. Now before we get into my top 10, there are several other movies that I think deserve an honorable mention. The first of which is Kubo and the Two Strings. This is a beautiful stop-motion animated movie from Leica Studios, who also did Coraline and The Box Trolls. It would have shown up on my top 10, but there was another animated movie that I think topped it. The Nice Guys. I didn't love this movie as much as a lot of other people, but I did really enjoy it, and it really captured the look and feel of the 1970s. And the chemistry between Russell Crowe and Ryan Gosling was amazing. I would love to see them team up again in something, because their banter and back and forth was so much fun to watch. Moana, a gorgeous, beautifully animated film with a fantastic soundtrack, great story, and a really good voice work from Dwayne The Rock Johnson and newcomer Aloui Cravalho. She was so good, I really hope to see and hear more from her in the future as well. The Edge of Seventeen was perhaps the biggest surprise movie that I saw this year. I didn't expect to love it as much as I did. Haley Steinfeld turned in a wonderful performance as the main character Nadine, and Woody Harrelson was hilarious as her teacher. The Accountant was another surprise. It didn't play out like I thought it would based on the trailers, but it was hugely enjoyable and I cannot wait to watch this movie again once it hits Blu-ray. And the last of my honorable mentions goes to The Magnificent Seven. This was just a fun movie. Is it a great film? No, absolutely not, but it wasn't trying to be. What it is, is a fun western, an entertaining popcorn movie where you can just escape for two hours and just have a great time. I'm really looking forward to watching this one again very soon. And now onto my top 10 list, which isn't really in any order except for number one, so don't pay too close attention as to why I put such and such film ahead of some other movie. The order doesn't really matter, but I did have to rank them somehow, so I just listed them and here we go. So anyway, coming in at number 10 is 10 Cloverfield Lane. This movie was so good. You felt like you were really there in the bunker with Mary Elizabeth Weinstead's character. You felt the claustrophobic atmosphere as you tried to determine if John Goodman's character is really telling you the truth about what's going on outside, or if he's just a complete psychopath holding her hostage. The last few minutes of this movie are kind of a gigantic what the fuck, but apart from that, it was highly entertaining, and comes in at number 10 on my list this year. At number 9, I have The Jungle Book. I said it in my review at the time, and I still can't believe it, but I am dumbfounded by the second to last line of the credits, which reads, Filmed in downtown Los Angeles. Yeah, that's right. Everything you see on the screen, with the exception of Neil Sethi, the young boy who plays Mowgli, is completely CGI. It is incredible. At number 8, I have Deepwater Horizon. This movie takes a grip of you in the first 20 minutes or so, and the tension builds and builds and builds and just does not let go until the very end of the film. This is another movie that I thought would be good, but I was completely unprepared for just how much I enjoyed it. I definitely recommend seeing this one and checking it out if you haven't already. At number 7 is Hacksaw Ridge. I think Andrew Garfield should get a Best Actor nomination for his portrayal of Desmond Doss, was a conscientious objector during World War II. The guy even refused to touch a weapon, but as a medic in the army, he saved numerous men on the battlefield. 
and say what you will about Mel Gibson as a person. As a director, he is among the best, and he delivered one of the best films that I've seen this year. At number 6 is Captain America Civil War. This is such a great comic book movie, and it really only adds to the disappointment that I felt in watching Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. That movie should have been a lot more like this one. A kind of comic book character is just going at it. And if you don't flip-flop whether you're on Team Iron Man or Team Cap at least once during the runtime, well, I'm not sure what movie you're watching. The Marvel Cinematic Universe continues to be absolutely amazing and churn out some very, very entertaining movies. At number 5 is my favorite animated movie of the year, and that is Zootopia. This movie works on so many levels. Little kids will enjoy it for the vivid colors and some of the more juvenile humor, and adults will really think about the messages and symbolism in the story. This truly is a film for everyone, and I highly recommend watching it if you have not already. At number 4 is a film that is definitely not for the little ones, but still one of my favorite movies of the year, and that is Deadpool. What can I say about this movie that hasn't already been said? Ryan Reynolds is perfect in the role. It is so funny, so violent, so enjoyable. I just love this movie. At number 3 is Rogue One, a Star Wars story. I've seen this movie three times now, and I love it more each time I watch it, and the more I think about it. It isn't a perfect film by any means, and it really isn't even a perfect Star Wars film. But it is very entertaining, and once it gets to the third act, the way it manages to tie in perfectly to the original trilogy, so good. As someone who grew up in the late 70s and early 80s, watching the original trilogy endlessly and playing with the original Kenner action figures on the playground nonstop, this is the movie that we were acting out and that we wanted to see when we used our G.I. Joe figures to be more rebel fighters against the Empire. This movie is very good and definitely earns a spot on my top 10 list. At number 2 is Arrival. I'm not going to talk too much about the movie itself, because I feel like the less you know about the movie going in, the more you'll enjoy it. I will say that Amy Adams delivers a great performance, and the direction by Denis Villeneuve is incredible. Definitely one of the best films I've seen this year. And so here we are. It all comes down to this, my number one favorite movie of the year, which was also one of my most anticipated movies of the year, and the movie that I've seen most recently. La La Land, directed by Damien Chazelle, who also directed Whiplash, which was one of my favorite movies of 2014, La La Land stars Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone. This movie is a love letter to old school Hollywood in every way imaginable. Gosling and Stone have such an amazing on-screen chemistry together. The cinematography is breathtaking and perfect in every frame. The music and choreography is delightful. Emma Stone proves why she holds a spot on my celebrity crush list. The story goes in several unpredicted and unexpected directions. This is nearly a perfect film. I truly, I just adore it. It is slowly expanding and coming into more movie theaters, so hopefully you all get to see it on the big screen. If not, please, when it comes out on Blu-ray, go ahead and purchase this absolute gem of a film. I cannot recommend this movie highly enough, and it is easily my favorite movie of the year. So there you have it, guys. Those are my favorite movies of 2016. As I said up top, this is just my list, and I'd be interested in knowing what your favorite movies of this year were, so let me know by leaving a comment down below. If you liked this video, please go ahead and click that thumbs up button, that really helps me out a lot, and then make sure that you're subscribed to my YouTube channel here if you haven't already, that way you don't miss any of my other videos. You can find me online at chefitosmovieblog.com, on Facebook at chefitosmovieblog, and on Twitter simply at chefitosblog. Thank you guys so much for your support and encouragement the past several months here in 2016. I do apologize that I haven't been very active this past month due to being sick, working a lot of hours, and the holidays, but with any luck I'll be back in my routine shortly. 2017 is going to be a big year for movies, and I cannot wait to share my opinions with all of you, and continue to grow my channel and my community in the new year. You guys are the best! I'll be back soon with more movie reviews and box office predictions. Until then, I will see you at the movies. Bye-bye.